Hi everyone. Uh, so chapter one, section five is about the union, the intersection, and the difference of sets. Um, so these are three kind of very basic operations on sets and um, I think straightforward to describe at least in their original form. So we'll uh, take a look at each of them and some examples and see where that gets us. So um, let's start with the union of two sets. So if A and B are sets and um, we're gonna make a new set called the union so the union C of A and B, and the notation for union is a U. So if you're trying to remember, because in a minute we're going to see an upside down thing uh, for intersection, if you're trying to remember which symbol means union, you can remember that the union is given by a U. Um, but anyway, the set C, which is the union of A and B, is the set whose elements are the elements of A or B, or both. So if you wanted to write that in set builder notation, you would say that A union B is the set of elements X, which are either an element of A or an element of B. And when we use this word or in mathematical contexts, it always means the inclusive or. In other words, it means this is true, or this is true, or both is true. Sometimes in common English, you'll say, um, if you ask, would you like a pizza or a hamburger? There's an implicit understanding that you don't want both, but in mathematics, uh, pizza or hamburger means pizza or hamburger or both pizza and hamburger. Okay, so here's a completely straightforward example. Our set A consists of the elements one, two, and three. Our set B consists of the elements three, five, and six. And the union of A and B is gotten by taking anything which is either an element of A or an element of B. So um, one, two, and three are elements of A. Three, five, and six are elements of B. So when you're done putting these two sets together to form the union, you get one, two, three, five, and six. The intersection is constructed not from the elements that are in either A or B, but from the elements with our, which are in both A and B. So if A and B are sets, the intersection of A and B, which you write with an upside down U. Uh, so remember, you can, intersection is the one which isn't a U. Uh, then the intersection of A and B is the set of elements that belong to both A and B. So A intersect B is the set of X such that x belongs to a and x belongs to b. So if we take the two sets that we looked at in the uh, pre previous example, if we take 1, 2, 3, and we intersect it with 3, 5, and 6, we're going to pick out only those elements which are common to the two sets. And there's only one of those, namely 3. Notice that the intersection is a set. So this is not just 3, but rather the set containing 3 because the intersection of A and B has to be a set. It's not just an element. And finally, we have the difference between sets. Uh, so the, the difference, or is, this is kind of how you subtract sets. If A and B are sets, the difference C of A and B, which you write like C equals A minus B, this is the set of elements in A which are not in B. So it's the set of elements X which belong to A but do not belong to B. So if A is 1, 2, and 3, and B is 3, 5, and 6, A minus B consists of things which are in A, so 1, 2, or 3, but not in B. So the only element of A which is not in B is, sorry, the only element of A which is in B is 3, so we keep 1 and 2. And just for completeness, this is not a computative, commutative operation. If you do B minus A, this is the set of things in X which are in B, but not in A. So it's going to be five and six, but not three, because five and six are in B, but not in A. 
a 3 is in B, but it's also in A, so you don't include that. Okay, uh, let's look at a, uh, another example. Here we involve some Cartesian products. And the question is, what is the intersection of A cross B and B cross B? And in order to answer this, let's, uh, let's try to figure out what these sets are. So remember that A cross B is made up of pairs where the first element comes from A and the second element comes from B. So we can make a little picture. If the first element comes from A, it's either 0 or 1. And if the second element comes from B, it's either 1 or 2. So here we would have 0, 1. Here we would have 1, 1. Here we would have 0, 2. And here we would have 1, 2. So A cross B is the four ordered pairs 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 2, and 1, 2. B cross B, on the other hand, we can make a similar little diagram. We would have 1 and 2 here and 1 and 2 here. So here we'd have 1, 1. Here we'd have 2, 1 because the x-axis comes first. Here we would have 1, 2, and here we would have 2, 2. So the four points in this case are 1, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, and 2, 1. So to compute the intersection, we need to figure out which elements are in both sets. Where are the common elements? So we can go through here. So um, 1, 2 is not in both sets. 2, 2 is not in both sets. 1, 1 is in both sets. Oh, sorry. 1, 2 is in both sets. I have a lot of trouble with this. But 2, 1 is not. So the two sets that are in the intersection, the two ordered pairs that are in the intersection, are 1, 2 and 1, 1. And uh, the point is that 1 is in both A and B, and so it can appear both as the first coordinate in A cross B and as the first coordinate in B cross B. And the second coordinate is any element of B, because it's the same in both cases, so 1 or 2. So uh, here's what I have in mind. Let's turn on the light. It's got a hurricane coming in. Alrighty, so um, here we're going to take um, our set X to be the Cartesian product of, an in of a closed interval and Y similarly. And uh, so we discussed this a little bit before. Um, when you have a Cartesian product of intervals, um, what you actually get is uh, a rectangle. So let me draw the two sets that we're interested in here. So here's X. The x-coordinate is between 1 and 3, and the y-coordinate is between 1 and 3. And so x is this region here. Here we have x. Uh, it's in black. Um, and that's because it's x, the points in x have x-coordinates between 1 and 3, and y-coordinates between 1 and 3, inclusive because of the square of brackets. And to draw y, we can, we can use a different color. Let's use uh, orange for y. So y, we have to look at coordinates between 2 and 4. And so y is the rectangle that looks like this. It's, um, it's x coordinates are between 2 and 4, and its y-coordinates are between 2 and 4, and so any point in between um, inside that box is an element of y. So now we can look at these different situations. So let's start by looking at x union y. We'll use yet another color. How about blue? So for x union y, that means we want points which are in either x or y, and so that's going to be everything which is inside one or the other of the two rectangles. 
So the blue set there is the union. X intersect Y means the set of points that are in both X and Y. And the set of points that are in both X and Y are going to be this region in here, including the ed edges. X minus Y are the things which are in X but not in Y. So that's going to be everything here. This is X but not in Y. And Y minus X is going to be everything which is in Y but which is not in X. And that's going to be everything up here. Now, the only problem with this picture is, besides the fact that it has a lot of colors, is that we're not being all that careful about the boundaries. So let's, um, let's look at it a little bit more closely just to get the boundaries right. So in the case of X union Y, everything is included. It includes the boundaries. What about X intersect Y? Well, if you're in, since the, I mean, for instance, this, I said that X intersect Y, remember that's the red. So that's this inner circle. This edge here belong, every point on this edge belongs to both X and Y and similarly for the other edges. So it does actually include the edges of this inner box. What about X minus Y? Well, there you have to be in X, but not in Y. So let's draw X minus Y separately just so we get a better picture of it. So here's 1 and 3, 2 and 4, 1 and 3, 1 and 4, 2 and 3. So x is 1 to 3, and y is 2 to 4. Let's clean this up a little bit. Whoops. And now we're interested in, so this here, is, we're interested in X minus Y. So certainly everything here is in X and not in Y. And that includes this piece of the boundary, this piece of the boundary, this piece of the boundary, and this piece of the boundary. But once you get to this point here, this point is in both X and Y. So it's not in X minus Y. And similarly, everything on this line here is in Y and in X. But in X minus Y, we want things in X, but not in Y. So we don't want to take uh, this, this line. So we have to make it, oops, let's make it dashed. And similarly, across the bottom here, We have to make this dashed because we don't want to include it. So X minus Y is everything in this kind of weird L-shaped thing, but, um, but the points on the actual boundary inside the box are not in X minus Y. And if you were to do the same thing for Y minus X, you'd get a similar picture. We can draw Y minus X on the same diagram. So Y minus X is going to be everything which is up here because these points are all in Y, but not in X. But similarly, we have to be very careful right along here and not include those points because they belong to both X and Y, and so they're not in Y minus X. So um, it's actually kind of, I think what, what you see here is we've actually split up X union Y into three pieces. So X union Y, remember, is everything here. It's got X minus Y as one part, and it's got X intersect Y 
as another part, and it's got y minus x as a third part. And so x minus y is everything down here, y minus x is everything up here, which is purple, and x intersect y is everything here in the middle together with these boundary edges. Uh, so there's a nice picture which shows how these three uh, concepts intersect with, interact with each other.